Welcome to the Atheist of Florida YouTube channel. We are pleased to offer some of the most significant speakers and the profound issues of our times. If you like today's video, please hit the like button. If you have already subscribed, thank you. If not, you know what to do. We have uh, two texts today that we're going to be reading from, uh, both of which were published in the 19th century, uh, A History of the Warfare of Science with Theology in Christendom, <clears throat> was originally published in, um, let me see here, 18, uh, 1896, uh, but uh, Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds was published in 1841, 42, something like that. And you can see from the size of this tome uh, that there's no shortage of popular delusions and madness. <laughs> and that was uh, <laughs> um, 150 years ago, 170 years ago, 120 years ago. I'll get it right. Uh, somewhere around there. Uh, <laughs> I've put links to those in the Gutenberg project in our chat if anybody's interested in looking at them. Okay. okay. One of the things I wanted to uh, mention uh, to uh, start off is some of the chapters uh, leading up uh, to the one that we're going to talk about today, the chapter we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to start with the history of the warfare of science with theology. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, and we're going to talk about chapter 16 from diabolism diabolism to hysteria <laughs> and uh but it's interesting some of the things leading up to it for instance see if any of this sounds familiar a theological opposition to surgery theological opposition to inoculation vaccination and the use of anesthetics <laughs> uh, <laughs> recent hostility to vaccination in england in canada during the smallpox epidemic theological opposition to the use of cocaine or to the use of quinine and the use of uh, anesthetics uh, in general. I think I've mentioned in the past that the first woman, and it's from this book that I take that fact, the first woman to use uh, an anesthetic to ease the pain of childbirth was burned alive uh, right on the uh, uh, grounds of Edinburgh Castle in Scotland. Uh, she and her physician, I think, were both killed. Uh, for interfering with providence, which makes it pretty clear uh, when uh, Adam and Eve are being thrown out of the Garden of Eden that women will suffer pain in childbirth. And attempting to uh, uh, controvert that fact uh, was sufficient to get, get, the, get the first of, first of them burnt alive. Uh, I also like to cite the um, dean, uh, the president of Yale University, <clears throat> who um, famously said that um, we ought not to vaccinate people for smallpox for the simple reason, same thing. If God wants you to die of smallpox, it's your obligation to die of smallpox. <laughs> Backsliders. And there were some people so carnal that they weren't willing to do that. <laughs> um, anyway, um, uh, some of the other chapters, they're all exceedingly interesting. I hope uh, one of the reasons I, I chose uh, this topic uh, after doing the Crusades, which is from the same book, uh, is because I hope people will read them because they are uh, factual gold mines and they're very interesting uh, in, that, uh, in that case. From fetish to hygiene, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the decay of theological views regarding sanitation, <laughs> the triumph of sanitary uh, science, uh, you know, Jesus cured blindness with clay and spittle. And so for years, um, you didn't need to go to the doctor. You went down to the priest and had him spit uh, on your wound or your <laughs> whatever your problem was. Of course, human spit is dirtier than a dog's. Uh, you're much better off to be bitten by a dog than a human uh, yeah. insofar as you're likely to getting infected. So uh, you can imagine how, how uh, spitting on your, <laughs> how well it worked. And uh, I don't know of anybody uh, uh, being cured of blindness other than the incident that uh, cited in the Bible. Does anybody here know of anybody? Clay and spittle people? No? Oh. <laughs> 
I know some about, Cherokees that would uh, debate that point with you. Cherokees. Hmm. The, the clay and spittle can actually, or uh, spittle cure disease of some sort? And all sorts of different things. I mean, you know. That might be we, one of the reasons there aren't that many Cherokees anymore. I think it had more to do with European spittle. Uh, that, no, that's an interesting sideline. I wasn't aware that it was a, a, a factor uh, among the tribes. I know that Amherst uh, was happy to distribute smallpox uh, infected uh, blankets uh, to the Indians in order to infect them. Um, but I wasn't aware that uh, they had any uh, theological arguments about uh, spittle and cleanliness and, and health and inoculation and, uh, as late as, uh, as that time. Of course, this is book, as I said, was written in the, was published in the late uh, 19th century. So, okay, epidemics and sanitation from a demon, demoniacal possession to insanity uh, was another major stride uh, when uh, science was able to show that people acted uh, out of the ordinary, not because they were possessed by demons, uh, but because they were suffering from some sort of uh, chemical uh, imbalance uh, or uh, physical mental uh, uh, injury of some sort. <clears throat> so, um, and now to our chapter, the first one we're going to talk about today, and um, um, I don't know if the uh, speaker thing is working properly. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know whose image is up there. If everyone, does everyone see me when I'm yes, talking? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. All right, just wanted to be sure it was working. Okay. Um, let me move over to the chapter here, which is... Um, Again, if anyone uh, has any comments or insights uh, that they'd like to bring to the party, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. But I found it very interesting that, uh, that uh, there was popular and religious opposition to uh, inoculations and vaccinations. Uh, again, it sounds like yesterday's news or this morning's news, news uh, for that matter. So uh, I'm just going to um, begin here by reading from the text. And there are some pieces that I have highlighted. And uh, so, so bear with me. <clears throat> here we go. In the foregoing chapter, I have sketched the triumph of science in destroying the idea that individual lunatics are possessed by devil, devils. In establishing the truth that insanity is physical disease and in substituting for superstitious cruelties toward the insane, a treatment mild, kindly, and based upon ascertained facts. Again, this is 125 years ago. They're just beginning uh, uh, to uh, break out of the uh, mold of uh, uh, demonic uh, possessions. <laughs> the Satan who had so long troubled individual men and women thus became extinct. <laughs> But another Satan still lived, a Satan who wrought on a larger scale and who took the possession of multitudes. For after this triumph of the scientific method, there still remained a class of mental disorders which could not be treated in asylums, which were not yet fully explained by science and which therefore gave arguments of much apparent strength to the supporters of the old theological view. These were the epidemics of diabolic possession, which for so many centuries afflicted various parts of the world. Uh, unless I skip over it in reading through this, one of the things that they did, because uh, whole groups, um, particularly convents or groups of, of women were uh, particularly prone to be affected and they would have various types of uh, hysteria that would affect the whole group. Some of them would begin laughing or they become sick or whatever. And so they sent uh, people out to the countryside uh, to stop these hysterias. One of the ways they did that was 
uh, to take the people who were suffering from uh, uh, whatever <laughs> uh, mental disorder at the time and, and throw them in the lake, which cured them. But one of the things they did was send out a magi magician who showed them how to take a stick and turn it into a snake and then turn it back into a, into a stick. This is important because uh, in the Old Testament, one of the things that uh, Moses did was to show up with his uh, uh, wise men and uh, turn uh, his uh, staff into a snake. Uh, and of course, uh, the Pharaoh's uh, wise men immediately did the same thing, but the, the snakes of Moses ate the Pharaoh's uh, snakes. So they were staffless as well as snakeless at the end of that exper experience. And so uh, uh, it's interesting that the French uh, are the one who did, uh, ones who did this, was to show the common people that it was a magic trick. And you can see how this might affect uh, anyone who's very familiar with the Bible might affect their views. Well, if it's a magic trick here, was it a magic trick uh, when Moses uh, did the same thing? Or yeah, if he ever did it, if he ever did it at all, or if he ever even lived. So anyway, I thought that that's an interesting correlation uh, between uh, the book of Genesis uh, and uh, the uh, hysteria affecting uh, um, vast areas of the European population and, and America as well uh, in the late 19th century. Hands up. <laughs> <laughs> There's one. Okay, Jim, while I go on to the next page, what's I'd be up? Happy, be happy to put my hand up and comment about the hysteria of the human beings and their capacity uh, for hysteria in the modern age. I think uh, Michael commented on that in the chat. Uh, we do not seem to have any relief from this kind of hysteria. And uh, the United States of America is consumed with it today. And it's very difficult to combat this because you cannot reason with these people. It is almost like a, a mental illness, although many people don't like it to be referred to a mental illness. They take uh, offense if you say that these people are uh, psychotic. Uh, so it's a, it's a ongoing problem. We're still plagued with the Cro-Magnum brain. Yeah. And well, it's it, been it, happening. It, yeah, I think it happened when Eisenhower uh, changed our motto in 56 from E Pluribus Unum to In God We Trust. And it kind of gave all these people carte blanche to change their entire structure of their lives to focus more on religion than it did uh, you know the the original establishment of the government which was democracy yeah. so they've gone away from it since then yeah that, that eisenhower really was a cave-in to pressures that have been going yeah. on since he wrote the constitution and which became really intense uh, during and after the civil war they even yeah. put in god we trust on a two cent piece i believe it was uh, after right. the civil war in order to placate uh, uh, some of these uh, um, people who want. Uh, I have a copy. I have a copy of one of those coins. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, really what they want is an endorsement by the government because it gives them uh, a, a, a more of a um, sense of legit well, legitimacy that yeah. they can put through to say, well, the government says we're okay. Yeah. yeah well, guys, one, one major problem that we have today is we're as if you go back several hundred years, the church was a driving force in this social insanity, if you will. Today, we actually have the news media, which is the driving force for this social um, insanity. Mark, you want to talk about something? Hmm. Michael, go ahead. Oh. oh. 
Um, I was just going to say, I mean, this goes along kind of what you were saying about Eisenhower. I mean, the whole reason why in God we trust was put on there was a, it was a response to communism and the perceived threat that the, you know, atheist, godless communists were having on our great Christian nation. And, um, yeah, I think when you look at these things, you know, um, the denial of uh, vaccines and stuff, you know, you could look at it, you know, the, the religion having a... Um, uh, an effect on that, but I think more so than that, that's really a artifact of that's undermining the power of religion that has on these people. You know, like for instance, uh, the, you know, the Catholic Church itself has said there's nothing wrong with evolution, but yet people will sit there and go out in the streets and you know argue and that you know that's anti-Christian and that. And if you look at where those arguments are coming from, it's coming from these you know, top Christian, you know, whatever, you know, the, I don't know, Jim Bakers or whoever, who they don't want to lose that power they have on the people by, you know, promoting something that might be based on something other than the literal truth of the Bible that goes against, you know, what they see as the literal truth of the Bible. American evangelists see Catholic as, uh, Catholic Church is, is evil anyway, so, you know. Well, the head of the Southern Baptist Church said the Catholics couldn't go to heaven uh, some years ago, or, or Jews, but uh, it was pretty clear about that. It played pretty much into the election of 1960 with JFK when he became uh, president. The, uh, I've seen documents related to that and, and how the local churches in, uh, in Greenville, North Carolina, anyway, had uh, basically said he was you know, he was Satan himself coming in as president. So yeah, and, and it was fix his orders from the Pope. Yeah, yeah. And it was all based on the fact that he was Catholic. <laughs> it, it had nothing else to do with it, you know, there's no reality to it. So well speaking I, I of like reality, to, let's I, I, take I'd like to pose a, 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 a another question here. We're living in a time of great uh, social and uh, economic unrest. Uh, for many reasons, not the least of which is the pandemic and the economic situation going on right now that uh, that accompanies it. And uh, so I'm, uh, it, it's time of what might be called a social panic. Uh, and I would like to ask the uh, opinion of folks here. Uh, what do you think uh, is the overall effect? Uh, one uh, article I saw in a recent copy of Atlanta magazine, Atlantic magazine, it, is that the number of instances of um, um, people who are becoming involved in witchcraft, that is, who are who are advertising witchcraft and who are who are um, um, expanding their covens, shall we say. Uh, it's it, it's really a pretty uh, pretty impressive. A lot of people um, are joining such efforts, and largely it is composed, as it always has been, of uh, nonsense and and uh, uh, ridiculous propositions that I won't go into. But um, you know, how how do you combat something like that? People are disrupted. They're upset. Uh, they're uncertain about what the future holds. And one of the reactions to that, evidently, is that people are more willing to succumb to um, to the kind of uh, uh, supernaturalist approaches. You can pick up the newspaper every day of the week and uh, read what's going to happen based on the stars and the position of the planets. Astrology. Uh, horrible, horrible scopes. Yeah, horrible scopes. <laughs> Jane Dixon was... Uh, I don't think she's still alive. Either. No, she's dead. Thank God. Would <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody care to speculate about why why this always seems to be the case that we're so lacking in social stability in this uh, society generally that we always seem to be succumbing to the, to uh, to waves of nonsense whenever we're challenged with a particular problem. I found that uh, Jim that in attending a lot of the recovering from religion um, um, Zoom calls and so forth in the past year, that I found that there are a lot of Christians in that group who after they left Christianity, they went towards 
witchcraft, Wicca, whatever you want to call it, because right. they found it to be, uh, or they were told it was a more nature centric type thing. And I think a lot of the younger generation is a, a bit more concerned about, you know, the, the globe and the climate and so forth and, and what's happening. And it just seems like, um, a, re a, a logical replacement to these folks until they actually get into it for a little while and they realize it's as much hocus pocus <laughs> as Christianity <laughs> is. And trade, so, trade uh, one illusion for another. But that's yeah. what I have found that I've met several people there that <laughs> once they left Christianity, they went towards the um, the witchcraft. I'd like, to, yeah, I'd like to digress for just a moment and uh, maybe get a little bit ahead. There's no reason to take this stuff in any particular order, just as it comes up. But uh, having to do with witchcraft itself, and uh, from our second text, is a very interesting um, uh, item, and that has to do with a misunderstanding of the famous text of the Mosaic Law: "Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live." Now, up until now, I had never realized uh, that uh, people are misinterpreting uh, that verse. I mean, it's pretty clear. Uh, she right, she's a witch, kill her, right? Uh, but uh, what it means, um, uh, in all ages of the world, men have tried to hold converse with superior beings. Uh, and um, it appears that um, the superstitious uh, monomaniacs of the Middle Ages imagined that the Bible established the existence of the power of witches and, and divination uh, by its edicts. And uh, it appears, however, that the Hebrew word, which has been rendered benefica and witch, means a poisoner and a diviner, a dabbler in spells or fortune telling, whereas the modern witch, the ones that were literally killed by the thousands uh, in the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th century uh, in Europe is a very different character. And joined to her pretended power of foretelling future events, she also could uh, work evil uh, upon life and limb uh, and possessions and uh, the power, uh, power to be uh, supposedly have a contract with the devil signed in blood. So. The idea of the witches that uh, starting around the 14th or 15th century is far different from the thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, uh, that kind of witch that they're talking about in the Bible. That's a very important fact and should come to yeah. a, as a great consolation to a lot of dead women. Well, kind of going to your topic, though, I mean, what is it that you see the relationship between that and uh, gender relations at the time? Because, exactly. I mean, you know, the witch was not just the witch, but was a woman they were killing. So, I mean, you know, it had to do with the recognition of female power. And it was also a time when we were moving from subsistence to industrialization, and they yeah. wanted women to be reproducing so they could have cheap labor. So they <laughs> wanted that gender role re-emphasized, and any woman who stepped outside that gender role was deemed not not worthy. And many of the uh, witches who stepped out, there, there's a couple of things I've read, but many of the women who were not, who were gay maybe, or uh, didn't want to marry a man, or didn't want to dress like a, uh, the female, um, or weren't attractive, although back then I'm not sure anybody was attractive with rotten teeth, but uh, <laughs> the, anyone who wasn't in that category could be deemed a witch and be gotten rid of. Um, yeah. And it was mostly due, I think mostly due to the economic change in society where we were going from a more cooperative environment of a subsistence living to a more competitive uh, wage slavery kind of thing where poor people worked in factories and, and that whole industrialization process was just beginning and they needed they needed cheap labor and they wanted women to have lots of babies. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like you're saying that Christians just sort of interpret the Bible however they think <laughs> benefits them the most. Is oh, that what you're no. saying? No, no, no. <laughs> they don't read it, so they gotta do that one. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Well, most of the people back then didn't know how to read. They depended upon yeah, the priests right. to give them yeah. Yeah, the yeah. information, and the church had a a specific goal in mind because they supported uh, the economic uh, transition. That's right. early on. The church such power because they get, they on. interpreted the Bible. Early on, it was a capital offense uh, to read the Bible uh, unless you were yeah. a priest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice to control the information. Uh, I just want to uh, go back to our text here for just one second. A couple of uh, examples, uh, the many examples of hysteria and possession that were sweeping, uh, again, Europe and came to the U.S. Uh, in the form of the Salem witch trials, which he gets into in a couple of pages here. But uh, some of the things that, that they were possessed with was um, in the 15th century, <clears throat> a, a German, uh, a nun, um, began uh, having a passion for biting, uh, and which was passed from convent to can convent and spread to Germany, Holland, and even across the, the Alps into Italy. And another convent where a nun began to mew like a cat. Others began mewing and the disease spread and was only checked by severe measures, as I say, like th threatening to throw them into the lake or actually throwing them into the lake. <laughs> Little stones there. <laughs> uh, he goes on to talk about Martha Brozier, a country girl who was possessed by the, of the devil and uh, under direct satanic influence. And she um, roamed about begging that the demon might be cast out of her and her imprecations and blasphemies brought consternation wherever she went. Uh, and of course, um, uh, this affected others um, uh, who, uh, in many cases, were accused of contributing to the problem. And, and so uh, the persecution uh, begins and begins to spread and, and increases as the phobias and the manias increase. So obviously it's a self-feeding, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Super, it's a self-feeding feeding calamity, I guess would be a good example. Um, yes? Um, I think I uh, heard that in, in uh, New England with the Salem witches, etc., they would pick on widows who were defenseless. And the idea was they would take their property after. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why they were called grass widows in a lot of cases, uh, because they, um, the only thing they owned was their estate from their dead husband, and uh, the woman couldn't own property, and so um, they needed to either get married right away, or pretty soon they'd find themselves being tortured and, and admitting uh, to witchcraft. A lot of women um, knew what was going to happen uh, to them and, and admitted to their crimes, uh, you know, just tell me what to say, I'll sign it. <laughs> and probably most of those were still tortured anyway. I don't know why it came up at, a, at that particular time in history, you know, this, you know, greed to take their property away from them by kissing them to be um, witches. Yeah, that was a good way for them to get it. <laughs> yeah. The male, the male patriarchy to get it, yeah. And it was just the church asserting their authority. Uh, they were trying to get control of everybody, of course, as they always are. Yeah. Well, the power ownership i mean yeah it took uh took everything well uh the bubonic plague of course was the best thing that ever happened uh to uh the catholic church which was the only church at the time uh, because uh, people gave them huge uh, sums of money trying to avoid the plague and then of course when everybody died there was nobody to give it to and, and so the, it went to the church uh they left it to the church uh, or they uh, just left it and then the church and the state split it up so i remember reading uh one time that by the time the plague ended the catholic church owned something like 70 to 80 percent of the wealth uh in the civilized world so a bunch of solid gold candlesticks yeah, yeah right <laughs> which we're all desperately need but, you know, I guess it's not That's much different than the 1% now. The only difference being that the 1% now aren't, aren't necessarily, necessarily Catholics. 
Right. Well, they, they profess to be religious, though. Well, they worship the dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we know what religion it is, but the, the masses generally don't know which God they're talking about. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, it does seem to be the case that for the greater part of the existence of humankind, we have specialized most importantly and creatively in various ways of torturing people. We have devised all kinds of uh, really um, diabolically clever ways of, mm. uh, of, of having our way. And usually this was an expression of some religious idea or another, mm -hmm. although it was also a way in which uh, uh, lords of the manor and uh, the aristocracy and the monarchies expanded their territory and wealth. And um, it's, uh, it's only in the, in the recent period, in the last 200 years, possibly less, that we have begun to become as civilized as we believe we are now, which is none too civilized, but still, it's a decided improvement over uh, what we've been talking about here. Uh, but we see the roots of a lot of nonsense in our own time as being uh, back in the period uh, that Joe is talking about. Yeah, and not just there. Uh, they, it seems to me that they have always uh, uh, been with us. I like this line uh, um, because it's so true, then, now, and forever, which is, the cardinal doctrine of a fanatic's creed is that his enemies are the enemies of God. Another reason uh, to have the uh, state uh, stamp of approval uh, on your uh, religious activities, um, particularly when uh, the enemies of the state are also the enemies of God. He's on our uh, side, not yours. That's right. <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, God is with us. Mm. <laughs> I've heard that Although, somewhere. <laughs> it's funny that everybody, everybody in a war always says God's on my side, and yet that never seems to affect the outcome of the war, the battles. You know, <laughs> the Germans had it on their the Germans had it on their belt buckles. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, any football game. War. Not the first. Well, at least at a football game, you got a 50-50 chance of God answering your prayer. <laughs> That's right. You got God, does not, God does not <laughs> interfere in games of chance or sporting events. I have that on good authority. That, yeah. 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 I can't flip no. a point and have it come up in heads every time. So, well, you know. yeah. What would you do when SMU plays Notre Dame or Baylor? <laughs> I don't know. If that's about football, I don't know anything about the one that's shaped the funny ball. You know? No, but know Baylor, Baylor is, a, is a Baptist <laughs> university. Southern Methodist, of course, SMU. Uh, oh, and, oh, okay. And Notre Dame, you know, it's like, who do you pray to? The same thing is true with gambling. If, if prayer really worked, when you walked into a casino, there'd be two roulette wheels. One for the people that prayed and one for the people that didn't. Right. Yeah. And they'd be winning all the time. The prayer. Yeah, the ones who prayed, uh, you know, uh, would would win a hundred percent. So they would just pay for the privilege of breaking even. And no it, one ever would suffer uh, from fires, floods, hurricanes, or anything else because at at the time they're all praying up a storm. That's right. And after all plus, <laughs> plus, I have a list of people who would be very very sorry they ever gave me a hard time. Uh, hey, Notre Dame's never caught on fire, has it? Not, not locally. No. <laughs> I'm curious as to what you think is the percentage of people who are not consumed with supernatural uh, or superstition. Because I don't think it's a very high number. I it seems to me that I, I, I hear this so much everywhere I go. You, you turn the TV on and, and or you can go on the internet and uh, it's all you hear is people attributing a catastrophe to homosexuals or any natural disaster is caused by sin or uh, this this crap is everywhere 
the, what do you, the superstition. How would you define, how would you define luck? If you're talking about me, I well, would just say bad. I, I don't think there <laughs> is such a thing as luck. I wouldn't have any luck at all, right? <laughs> Back to the coin toss, you know? <laughs> I, I define it as a delusion. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't I, really I believe yeah. there is such a thing as there luck. Isn't. I, think I agree with you. I would too. People make their own luck. They, they stop in the middle of a, of a 70 mile an hour highway and get hit by a semi and wonder, why am I so unlucky? You know, <laughs> things like that. Right. right. We make our own luck. If we're, if we're careful in our lives, we have good luck. If we're not, we have bad luck. That's just human stupidity and stupid, you know, human uh, intelligence. Well, there still we are. There still are um, uh, aberrations Random around physical yeah. means. You're standing on a yeah. street corner and get right. hit by a truck. You know, right? Well, well, yeah, but why are you standing in the street? <laughs> you know, some maybe some drunk just runs up on the sidewalk and hits you. That happens all the time. Now that is random. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. Like whoa, bam. Okay. That's yeah. That's, that's a not great blues hit. You know, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. And if, I sing that all the time, from me, from hee haw. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my problem is with the word self, rather than, uh, I think the the reality is that we think of luck as a a uh, outcome that is determined by chaos, whereas in reality, it's determined by uh, other factors that are reality, part of reality. So a lot of people like, for instance, if I can give an example, the, the Titanic sunk and there were some people who died and others who managed to make it into a lifeboat and those that made it into the lifeboat said, thank God that he saved me, right. okay? <laughs> and this suggestion has a tremendous amount of implications, all of which are superstitious. I mean, it also has far-reaching implications because, you know, when you're looking at it that way, um, you know, believing that uh, you're going to, let God cure your child, and that you you know you can't have him go out and get an, uh, a a shot. I mean that's affecting not just you, but it's also affecting all the people who have no belief whatsoever in luck or in belief. Your pocketbook too. Affects your pocketbook too, Michael. Yeah, well, it affects all of us, and it doesn't doesn't just free, affect them. You can have a free free shot, or you can just pay for all those crazy ivermectin you know yeah, horse right. paste and stuff i mean and the other treatments that cost thousands of dollars I man it's, it's stupid <laughs> just get a free shot and be done with it you know and the people who aren't getting the shot are clogging up the hospitals and people who need to get into the hospital who have actual reasons you know they got the shot or they have an actual medical emergency they're yeah. not being allowed to get medical attack. attention because somebody didn't want to get inoculated yeah. I have working in the yard tomorrow and I have a heart attack. I'd like to be able to, to go to a hospital and let them, let them admit me, but a lot of them won't now. They can't. Yeah. And that, that, you know, they're killing the rest of us. So, and there's that sort of failure to recognize that. I think that's really the yeah. biggest problem of all of this. Their failure to recognize that they're not just affecting themselves, they're affecting other people, but. They don't, they don't care because their belief is going to save everyone. Yeah, I would. I can't really understand those people. I, I have no no basis on which to try and understand what how they think because that's just crazy. That's, you know. Well, they've been thinking that way for a long time. In 1760, mm -hmm. some congregation of, of Calvinistic Methodists in Wales became so fervent that they began leaping for joy. The mania spread and gave rise to a sect called the Jumpers. A similar outbreak took place afterward in England and has been repeated at various times and places since in our own country. Judy, did you have any Jumpers in your fundamentalist uh, group people? Uh, oh, we just had snake handlers. Snake handlers. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. We have plenty of rollers. Uh -huh. 
But they didn't have well, any area that, that comes to mind where whole groups of the congregation would leap or, or yeah. begin uh, speaking in tongues. Speaking yeah. in tongues. Yeah, but they have to do the raising of hands, I guess. That yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, but <laughs> How about responsive church? reading? I think responsive reading. <laughs> What's that? I think it, I've never heard of it. Maybe, maybe. Well, the point yeah, is, uh, easy version of of leaping. <laughs> you know, raise your hand. Uh, uh. <laughs> For those of you who think religion is going away, the idea that you know, three hundred years ago, people were acting this uh, same way uh, that they act now uh, might discourage you. Uh, uh, from or might enlighten us somewhat as to how difficult it is to get rid of the, the religious impulse that's so ingrained and so widespread. Well, yeah. I think if we taught self esteem and self care against loneliness and things like that to children, we might <laughs> have less. I don't know. I just feel like people lean on religion for all the reasons that they're they're lacking in their life. We yeah. can get rid of that idea of the, um, oh crap, now I can't think of it. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're all on our own and... and um, Libertarianism. Well, kind of libertarianism, but not quite there. The, um, you know, like the cowboys were out there on their own and nobody helped them and people, Pick yourself up your bootstraps. And Rugged individualism. Individualism. Rugged individualism. Yeah. Perfect, you. Jim. <laughs> that Perfect. that uh, does a lot to um, hinder our our movement uh, towards. Because if you look at the countries that have a very strong social network, they they don't have much religion. Yeah. And we don't have that here. We don't have a strong strong social network to support yeah. people who get in trouble. Mm. I think the question of cause and effect is a good one that does need to be explored and understood far more because we certainly have plenty of this going around these days and it, if nothing else it just emphasizes as Joe just pointed out we haven't evolved to be better thinkers and I don't think there's one of us that has not been superstitious in our lifetime. And I've often asked myself, why did I embrace superstition? Because there was a time when I was very superstitious and I don't really understand why I did, except it, it, it had to have been nurturing. Why did you believe in Santa Claus? Gifts. Well, uh, it was nurture. Gifts. Mommy and daddy brought you, brought it to you. That's all. Yeah. And they, but Michael said it gifts. I mean, you were getting the good stuff. And, you know, and, uh, and, and it cemented in your mind, in your young mind, a, um, an acceptance of belief without, without uh, evidence of faith. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, right up, right from the very beginning. When you're, when you're just a kid, you're indoctrinated into this. And so we all generally are going to be believers of something that doesn't make sense. We have to get older and understand after you study enough that that stuff's just not real. And you have to start, you know, focusing on reality. Well, um, one of the points of today's discussion is that uh, the people who suffer from those ideas are overwhelmingly women. And probably children of any description. Mm -hmm. uh, as we all know, uh, women have been uh, held back from everything from being allowed to get a divorce to being allowed to get a driver's license. Uh, and that hasn't changed. Uh, anyone know when they're going to uh, ratify the Equal Rights Amendment? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't until the 1970s that women could even have uh, credit cards in their own names. Right. The bank accounts, yeah, which is crazy. In many states, I was alive then during my life. <laughs> I can't believe that. So, the point is that uh, I think uh, not just women, uh, 
probably women in the majority, but anyone who's disadvantaged and unable to protect themselves, uh, again, the, the physically ill uh, who were thought to be lunatics uh, and uh, mm -hmm. um, the, the treatment, they, the kind of treatment they received and, and on and on and on. So it, the victims of these kinds of superstitions are clearly uh, uh, the weaker sex uh, and the weak in general. Yeah, the Fanny Farmer, that famous story. She was committed to a mental institution because she dared to show, you know, independence. Right. So, of right. course, she was mentally ill and had to be committed. And this was back in, what, the third, was it, 30s or 40s? I can't remember the actual That's story. That's about right. A yeah. better example would be Jezebel. It wasn't because she cheated on her husband or was a big slut that she was killed. She was killed because she uh, um, married a king, Ahab, I think it was, and he allowed her to work, continue to worship Baal. She was killed for her for being stubborn about her religious views. <laughs> I missed, uh, Michael, what you said Fanny Farmer's uh, problem was. Fanny Farmer, she was, it's a... Uh, Francis Farmer. made a movie, Francis Farmer, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking not of... The candy a, maker, not the candy. Uh, right. I was thinking of Kurt Cobain's daughter, I think she's Fanny Farmer. <laughs> Yeah, Francis Farmer. Yeah, she was, you know, it's a, they made a movie out of it, I know, at some point. But yeah, she was committed to a the... mental institution for being basically a feminist. Oh, okay. And just the well, term I... hysterectomy, you know, comes from hysteria. So Sorry. that was one of the things they did to women is they would um, sterilize them. And... Yeah. Uh, to remove their hysteria, you know, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, even well, doctors today also, don't use the term hysterectomy anymore. Oh, they, thank God uh, we've gone beyond all that abortion stuff. They, they treated hysteria with vibrators. I'd like to, I'd like, yeah, right. I'd like to quote uh, from the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, 1797 publishing. <clears throat> the reality of demoniacal possession stands upon the same evidence with the gospel system in general. All the proof you need. <laughs> Real authority. Right there in an unsighted book. Yeah, yeah. Right there in the encyclopedia. That's right. It's hard to imagine they got away with that that long ago. It didn't. Getting away with it today. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, they're sort of get yeah, they get a lot more opposition now than they did then. <laughs> Thinking of Texas. I wish we had a uh, psychologist or psychiatrist, I don't know which is the proper term I should be using, amongst our group that could explain or uh, enlighten us regarding this natural human tendency to think in terms of any time something goes bad in our lives that the we we have a tendency to think that the world mother nature is against us we blame we blame supernatural forces for our bad luck when you were a kid you were told that it was because uh um, when, when, when you had bad luck, it's because you did bad things. And that's why Santa Claus left cold in your stocking, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And, <laughs> I, and I don't think that we ever seem to, this is a very serious problem. We had struggled to overcome this tendency. I know years ago, I lost money in the stock market and I had these thoughts about you know, the supernatural is against me here. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it, 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 you know, I look at this and I say, this is crazy. But that's nevertheless the mentality, the thoughts that come into your mind. Well, maybe it's because we live in a world in which uh, there are many catastrophic things happening uh, in the lives of individuals and in the lives of people in general. I mean, everywhere you turn, uh, there are little events and big events which mm -hmm. uh, negatively affect people's lives about which they can do very little. So I, 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 we can hardly blame people for wanting to 
find a cause for being able to attribute their misfortune to, to something that they can identify. The cause, the, most, the, the cause that affects society right now is whenever something bad happens because people did something stupid and that's why it happened. <laughs> you know, somebody did it. Um, Bill Northworthy, would you like to make a statement? Yes, I would. Um, I think it's a feature of human uh, psychology that fear is by far the most powerful emotion that drives behavior. And I think people in power uh, learned that probably 10,000, 20,000 years ago, maybe a million years ago. And we have been conditioned over the millennia to respond to fear much more readily than we do to any other uh, motivation. And so whenever uh, something like witchcraft is uh, brought into the discussion as a possibility, then obviously they're trying to send a message. The people who are making those accusations are trying to uh, uh, make a point that if you don't toe the mark, you too are going to be penalized by uh, burning at the stake, et cetera. And that's a pretty powerful motivator. Hmm. Yeah, politicians have known that for a long time. <laughs> More importantly, it's like, you know, if you don't follow our rules, you're gonna be punished. Yeah, what do you say? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was watching that the, something, I think it was Bill Maher was saying that all the Republicans that have voted for impeachment of Trump are no longer in office or the two or three that are left in office um, are will not win re-election in 2022. And there's a lot of fear there that, you know, either I capitulate and say, okay, I was wrong, I made a mistake, I do support, you know, Trump and so forth, or right. um, they're out of office. And, um, and that uh, that fear um, is one tool that um, Trump is using effectively. That's what I said about the, uh, the the you know the attack on the Capitol. If it happens again and they're successful, you know the uh, what's his name Kiplinger and uh, Cheney, the two two Republicans on the uh, commission, uh, you know they're going to switch sides. They're going to go right back to Trump, the crazies. You know, they're not going to go with the with these sensible Republicans. They're like, OK, you guys are winning. We're going to join your side. Somehow I picture the uh, insurrection if they have another one at the Capitol. If they were actually yeah. able to able to take over the Capitol, I feel like the image that comes to my mind is a, is a dog that chases cars and actually catches one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They get come back with some broken teeth. They'll shut up. <laughs> yeah, what do I do with the damn thing now that I've got it? Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to find out. <laughs> Just look when the dog finally grabs something. He can't move. He's, his eyes dart all over the place, but he, <laughs> he doesn't move. But he's got a hold of that. He's like, yeah, I got it. Now what do I do? Tell me. So like, yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> Good analogy. Good analogy. Only problem is that dog could do some damage to that car before he's done. He yeah, especially with a Rottweiler. Yeah, I've seen a Rottweiler do it. Do, woo, those rubber bumpers aren't, they're, don't, they're not well made. So, <laughs> Well, during World War II, the uh, Nazis had a propaganda ministry, which proved to be extraordinarily effective in uh, swaying the populace of the country to support uh, Adolf Hitler, despite the fact that their uh, houses were crumbling around them from all of the bombing and uh, hundreds of thousands, actually literally millions were being killed and they were still uh, shouting the praises of uh, Nazism. So I'm looking at today in comparison yeah. We North have a Korea. worse situation. We have a worse situation. We, we've got the media, most of the media, controlled by a handful of people 
who right. most of them are conservatives and are using that media as a propaganda machine. Right. I think yep. we got a more serious problem than the Nazis ever had. If you want to see that in action, all you have to do is just look at North Korea today. That's the exact same thing is going on. People are living in dire poverty, but the government has them convinced that they're living on the greatest country on earth and everybody wants to be like them. Uh, there's actually one girl on YouTube called Yonmi Park who's an yeah, activist. Yeah. And she does a lot of videos where she talks about life in North Korea and like what they tell her and what they teach them when they're growing up and... How, you know, North Korea is the greatest country in the world and they'll bring them to museums where they show them like captured American tanks and all this other stuff. And, you know, captured Americans who came over to North Korea and talked about how horrible life was in America. And we were all living in tents and we we're all living in poverty. But yet they don't have running water, indoor plumbing or any of that. But, you know, that propaganda is enough where they'll sit there and, you know, they, well... That plus the fact that they don't want to go against the government because uh, some very bad things will happen to them. Do you know why they divided uh, Korea at the end of the Second War? It was it was just a uh, I don't know uh, just a sad uh, uh, trick of fate. Um, they divided uh, Germany uh, into halves after the second at the end of the Second War. Of course, Russia insisted on that, and so uh, when the war ended. Um, they simply divided Korea into because that's where the two armies were sitting at the, at the time. And nothing to do with any politics and, uh, other than, well, we're here, we're going to just, uh, we'll take the bottom half, you can have the top. So the Allies uh, divided uh, North Korea at the end of the war for no reason whatsoever. Just a matter of convenience and coincidence. And we've paid the price for that ever since. Played <laughs> very <clears throat> well. Um, anyway, just a little political aside, I want to talk for just one or two minutes about demons, uh, which are important uh, in witchcraft because witches can control demons. Uh, and in order to affect uh, the uh, results uh, that uh, they want, uh, they use demons uh, for that purpose. <clears throat> and it appears that there uh, is an infinite number of uh, inferior demons, the devil being the chief demon of all. Um, and um, apparently they um, swarm the earth um, with millions of them of both sexes, uh, many of whom trace their lineage uh, to Adam, who after the fall was led astray by devils, uh, assuming the forms of beautiful women to deceive him. And they increased and multiplied among themselves with the most extraordinary uh, rapidity. They're in thin air and they can pass through the hardest substance. And when they all cluster together, they cause uh, hurricanes and tornadoes and such. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, uh, people don't know how many there are, but luckily we have a, a guy by the name of Wierus, W-I-E-R-U-S, who asserted that he was able to count the number of devils and that there were actually 7,405,926 of them, and they were divided into <laughs> two countries companies uh, or battalions uh, to each of which uh, there was a prince or captain so that clarifies the devils uh, another another digression of course there was a, another cleric of some sort who by using the uh, uh, bible was able to ascertain that god created the earth that started at 10 30 in the morning on october the 5th the year 7002 bc <laughs> It was 4004 BC, I think. Whatever it was, but I mean, he, he was able to pinpoint it right down to the time of day. <laughs> that Gregorian or Julian calendar? <laughs> right. Egyptian. <laughs> oh, crap. We're off by 11 days. <laughs> I, thought it was at, I thought it was his sunrise. Well, I, I, it, it's a matter, it, it, they, the, they appreciated the importance of science. And getting things down, things down accurately and precisely. Yeah. It, it started a trend, you know. It was good. I mean, again, even what you were saying with you know the demons, the demons took the form of beautiful women to seduce the men. You know, again, yeah. there's that sort of <clears throat> thread of misogyny that just goes through Christianity from the beginning. Yeah, I've seen Lucifer. 
I've seen Lucifer on TV. I know what I'm you know. <laughs> yeah, I've seen him many times on TV. I can't resist a beautiful demon. I mean, you know, whenever, you know, Christianity seems to have that, usually the bad people usually are the, you know, it's a beautiful, even today, you know, resist that temptation of the flesh. It's going to lead you astray. Resist those beautiful women. They're just trouble. Now I'm just too tired to go after them. Yeah. Adam was happy as a man could be till he started messing with that old apple tree. Only <laughs> <laughs> men can be tempted. Women can't be tempted because Ain't they're that just like a woman. Yeah. Who was the one who gave Adam the apple? It was Eve. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's I'm no sure secret. You're going to have to speak up a bit. There's no, there's no uh, secret that the serpent was shaped in a well, kind of a phallus shape, you know? Yeah. You know what the serpent was all about, too, you know? All right. <laughs> all had to do with sex. We miss what you said, Judy, because your volume was very low. Who, me? No, I Judy. Uh, uh, Judy. Oh. I just said it's always just women who are the temptresses. So I guess we women who are not lesbians are safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you tempt to tempt each other. That's yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even in our society, you know, we still see that, you know, the woman who goes out and has sex with a bunch of men, she's the, the, the hussy, the whore or whatever, and the guy is the hero. Yeah. Or slut, <laughs> they use a wonderful word, slut. But then the guy, yeah, he's, he's just like, oh, he's virile. He's got lots of, lots of get up and go. Yeah, he's good. That's right. So they they kind of like, you yeah, know, good job, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do the same thing with fat shaving, shaming, you know, mm. a heavy set yeah. man. Jocular and uh, um, oh, I don't know, great dancer, light on his feet, whereas an overweight woman is worse than a slut, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's it's all it's always been there. But I guess 328 AD pretty much started a lot of stuff that we need to fix. Yeah, yeah but however, the women that were overweight back in, in the era of this. They were wealthy because everybody else was thin. Oh, right. So, it was a, one time again, it was held to be a point of beauty. Uh, exactly. You know, right. like, they better. Yeah. yeah until they could feed their wives. Especially among the Hawaiians, obviously. Yeah. Really? So, yeah. So, so yeah, that's true. It's, it's all, all different eras that we've gone through. And I, I remember hearing the Lilith story. Oh, yeah. And, and not Lilith. really. Um, you know, I understand why, you know, women have adopted that, you know, at the Lilith Festival and so forth, that it's, she seemed like a strong woman. Um, she was made from the same stuff that Adam was. Right. Yeah, where did she come from, you know? She sort of appears like that. Yeah, well, she was in the, she was in there before the uh, Catholic traditions kind of uh, coalesced around this, this woman, you know, suppression. And uh, Lilith was uh, the same as Adam. She had all the same capabilities. And um, then, then, of course, when that, you know, when the Catholic Church started saying, well, we got to kind of control the women, uh, they took uh, Lilith and they made her the mother of demons and cast her out of the throne and pulled in Eve, who came from one of Adam's ribs, you know, like. Well, I'm not even sure if that story is really accurate because, you know, there's a, a um, Moses statue created by Michelangelo and Moses has little horns. And <laughs> the same, you know, in, in Hebrew, you, you stop using uh, vowels after a while. So a lot of words, you know, look the same like they would here, like worm and warm. You know, right. but you use it in the in the context. So the term "rib" is also synonymous with the word "sigh," as in <sighs> I, the breath. And I think that's a little bit more romantic than the rib. It's better than what uh, Archie Bunker said. Oh, and the horns were were rays of light. That's that's what they said ah. when Moses came down from Sinai with the tablets that he had rays of light. Short. But and some people interpret that as horns. It's because yeah, there's a bush someplace in there. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So Ar- Archie Bunker said, "Well, a, a rib rib meat was basically a cheaper cut of meat anyway." <laughs> <laughs> Out of right. the mouth of Archie. <laughs> yeah, right. The, 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 the bunker, the sage. Yeah, really. Oh yeah. <laughs> Can anybody yeah. explain why black cats are con- considered the uh, you know the the spirit guides of of witches? Back the companions. In the- from yeah, maybe whatever. from from uh, um, Shakespeare, Hecate, the, the 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 was one of the cats of the three witches in Macbeth. Oh, okay. and it goes back to ancient she, Egypt. She was black. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't that's know. Right. No. Yeah, Halloween's coming up, and I have to keep my black cats in. <laughs> it goes back to uh, what's it, Beth or whatever the ancient Egyptian goddess? It was a, Bathsheba. You think goddess Bathsheba? Yeah. yeah. Well, another <laughs> another reason cats are vilified is um, because the women they accused of witchcraft, many of them were brewers of beer. And they kept cats in order to keep it, the mice out of the grain oh, the while goats, they were yeah. brewing. And then when men wanted to take over and, and women were being subjugated back into just childbearing, the, the men came in to take over the brewing and they were accusing the women who had been brewers of witchcraft uh, so that they could get control of the brewing process. Yeah. All economics all <laughs> comes yeah, down to exactly. the dirty yeah, dollars. Yeah. What happened bet to the cats? I bet you I had a rat problem after that. <laughs> yeah, really. Wow. Well, they, they got some dachshunds then. <laughs> well, in fact, that's one of the reasons for the plague is the cats were killed uh, because they were thought uh, to be agents of the devil and they were worshipped by the Egyptians. And, and so there was a scarcity of cats, which means that there's uh, a, uh, an excess of vermin. Evil. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and they just... They they look sneaky every time they walk you know across the house. Oh, no. and, and, the, and the snake tail, the snake tail. Oh, no, it's just it's that stealthily walk. You know, it's like dogs don't do that. Dogs look stupid all the time. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah but dogs okay. don't have to. They don't have to sneak up on squirrels and rats and mice and, and yeah, you know, the birds. yeah. So that's that's the purpose. That's nature. But you know, I'm just I, saying they're not evil. I I had a cat one time. I called him Battle Cat because that sucker could hunt. I mean, he was good at it, and he yeah. and he was he looked like he was you know he was ready for battle all the time. And I understand. Huh? I understand that cats actually uh, the mewing noises that they make they only make those around humans. Yeah, they de- determine that humans uh, that sound appeals to humans, but amongst themselves they don't make that noise. Well, it's just like dogs don't bark unless you teach them to bark. Unless they I don't, have I don't know about they that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lots dog of dogs barking. I to teach them to bark, and I, I, I try to teach them not to without much success. Yeah, that, yeah. Dogs just do what, what they do, and I don't. There's no reason to. Them. <laughs> <I> <laughs> what you want is one that will bite on command, not bark. Come on. Dogs. Other part of it. Dogs are the greatest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another part of the reason is because, you know, dogs are so domesticated and cats are not really all that domesticated, too, that people tend to have more of a distrust of cats. Yeah. Well, you know, they are, they are, they're quiet and they're, and they are stealthy in their approach. Yeah. And whenever you're working on a computer, they have got to get on your computer and just, just <laughs> bother you. Walk across the map. They want the attention. It's like, look at me, talk to me, get off yeah, that thing. Dogs, dogs are the same. They've always gone, you know, pet me, pet me. Yeah. Well, they the don't know how to walk. The cats are silent. Uh, they, just, they just annoy you. Oh, Andrea's got a word. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They, he just lies there in the computer room while I'm doing my thing, and oh, I roll dog. over him with a chair. The dog, right? <laughs> Ooh. The cat wouldn't do that. The cat would help. <laughs> well, cats are distinctly related to the devil and are thought to be uh, demons in and of themselves. So, uh, that's, that's what about the, the goat thing with uh, that's also a devil kind of symbol? If you notice, that didn't come about until the Christians started uh, encountering the pagan peoples of Europe. And then that's why we got the, you know, the whole idea of 
Satan being horned and cloven hooved and all that. Yeah, they probably danced around with the uh, animal heads on. You know, I know didn't the right. uh, Indians do that with the buffalo or something with the horns? And they oh, some plains Indians did that too. Yeah, and again, yeah, yeah they you they did use that against them definitely. You know, they say, look, these people are practicing Satanism. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just because of the horns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you look at the earliest Christianity and the earliest descriptions of demons and that, they didn't look like that. It wasn't until they started encountering pagan peoples, all of a sudden, you started noticing the evil people start looking like the people that they were trying to convert who wouldn't convert. Interesting. I don't know think... get rid of. No. But they didn't have Facebook in those days. They could have been spreading pictures of everybody. I mean, how did they spread that actual image? You know, I mean, I, you know, we can put a poster up of something now, but I get, you know, not not that many people read unless they passed it around. That's right, churches, you know, the whole icon iconography and paintings and, you know, yeah, there's exactly. always depictions. Yeah, and they used to post things up actually, uh, uh, and for people like. And that's why that became such a central feature of churches. You know, the the iconography. I mean, what's more powerful than that to an illiterate person when you see a literal depiction of Jesus on a cross being hung there for your sins. And they were good. White they were hair and because who else made the money? You know, because nobody else would patronize them. And that oh, guy with the white hair and fair skin is. born in the Middle East. <laughs> there is a reason why we, why we say that uh, when we're saying bad things about those we oppose, we are demonizing our enemies. <laughs> Good word. Yeah. Good word. Yeah, we, we made an adjective out of it. I mean, yeah. I mean, a verb out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the whole art of propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Just, uh, what's her name? Uh, Judge uh, uh, Stupid Broad on Fox News. Uh, she calls them demon crats. Hero. 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 Right. She calls yeah. them not Democrats. She calls them demon crats. Yeah, Janine Pirro. Yeah, she, yeah. She's, a, she's wonderful, isn't she? <laughs> oh, every time you watch her, you got to wipe the spittle off your face. <laughs> so, uh, appar apparently, the, the this has led to some terminology. And one word comes to mind: scapegoating mm -hmm. and dehumanizing, which is almost mm -hmm. like saying demonizing. Dehumanizing. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> You know, I have a, uh, a toy phaser that I keep beside the table when I'm watching TV. And whenever somebody comes on, like Jeanine Pirro or somebody's going to say, I, I, I shoot him with the phaser. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels very cathartic. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you need to get a disruptor. I, yeah, I had one of those when I played a Klingon at school, but yeah. I don't. I don't know that it has much to do with witchcraft, but at one time I wanted to market an executive tension release toy, which was a big nerf computer with Bill Gates' picture on it and a, and a baseball. <laughs> yeah, I used to have that poster that said, uh, said something about hit any key and there's a, that guy over the computer getting ready with a bat and smack it. There's a pooch. <laughs> That's Andrea. <laughs> uh, yeah. I still struggle with some some superstitions like I feel it's almost impolite in society not to say bless you after someone sneezes mm -hmm. you I know gesundheit. I, yeah, I do gesundheit. say gesundheit. Yeah. yeah but it's I, still uh, why am I yeah. saying anything I had a had a I had a boyfriend that complained that, that I didn't, I didn't say, say good, good, and I say gesundheit or god bless you and I said I'd rather say did you get anything on you or you're extremely good looking. What is that from? Yeah, I feel that. Did you get anything on you? I, I when people, I used, to, I still say it now, but you know, it's like thank God or something like that. So like because we were taught to do that from all of our lives, but now I've gotten to where I kind of practice every time I think about it. I say thank Darwin instead of God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Replace God with Darwin in my mind anyway, and it helps a lot actually. Oh, thank Darwin. 
And I find myself doing that all the time. And it's like, you know, I say it and then I think, why did I just say that? I don't even believe in God. I'm saying, I'm just saying it out of some social convention. That's why I stopped using it. And I have a, I have a picture, a meme that I use called, it says in Darwin, we trust. And the, you know, it's like, yeah, let's put that up there instead. (laughs) The whole evil eye thing, you know, yeah, crazy. Um, my my aunts used to say, "poo poo poo," and I found out that that was short for spitting three times. Hmm. Like you shouldn't say yeah. something like, "This is such a beautiful baby." They'd say, "poo poo poo," and I was I always thought it was just funny because you know I was a little kid and someone was saying "poo," and uh, but the thing was that they were they were actually warding off the evil eye that you shouldn't attract attention to this beautiful baby. So that was crazy. <laughs> Jewish. Is that, is that predominantly a Jewish thing, the poo 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 thing? <laughs> I've never heard of it before. No, okay. Maybe it is. Yeah, it's a Jewish thing. It's okay. a Jewish thing. I come, I come from the same background as you. Okay. So, it was, yeah. was the mystical Hasidim, or is it? Isn't there a group that that they actually practice sort of spells? Kabbalists, spell? Kabbalists, Kabbalists, Kabbalah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nobody ever burned them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my got Madonna on their side. My grandmother would say Kenahora, which poop, poop, poop. Just keep the evil eye away, Kenahora. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to uh, comment. People were, um, were talking about uh, goats and cats. In France and England, witches were supposed to ride uniformly upon broomsticks, but in Italy and Spain, the devil himself, in the shape of a goat, used to transport them on his back. So ah. uh, it's the devil who frequently uh, is seen in the shape of a goat, uh, as opposed to demons themselves. He being the chief, you know, he became greatest of all time. So whatever happens, make sure they don't get your goat. That's right. <laughs> you know, before this, I did a Google search to see if there were witches in the Old Testament, and there is the witch of Endor. Um, so it wasn't um, just a Christian thing. Um, it's, everybody was I cool. I thought that's where the Ewoks came from. <laughs> uh, I was just trying to figure out where, where I'd heard that before. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Star Wars, indoor. <laughs> yeah, but and Shakespeare with the three witches. Remember that was that 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 yeah that my bubble head. bubble toil and trouble. Yeah, my That's friend has a cat named after one of where the we got it. Hecate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Billy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, in the in uh, Puerto Rico, they have the legend of the chupa cabra. Cabra, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that takes the form of a goat. Is it a goat or like a, a coyote? Well, a cabra is a goat. Oh, cabrito! Yeah, you're right. I've eaten Cab- cabrito. Cabra, yeah. Ah, hmm. interesting. Oh, well, there's the darkness everywhere. <laughs> Just turn out the lights, and you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going, we're going to find out that almost everything we, we know, think we know now, all that's modern, you know, accepted knowledge, all came from hundreds of years of constant churning, of all these old theories and, you know, and ideas. And um, we can't call them modern or, or accepted value because they come from everywhere. And I mean, don't, long time ago. don't forget that, like, you know, chemistry came from alchemy. Yeah. You know, modern, the first scientists were actually monks and... Right, Gregor um, Mendel, mm-hmm. the wise men astronomy. Were astrology. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, astronomy came from astrology. I mean, yeah. Well, God, is, God is still fine tuning the universe. That's what this is. Uh, the phenomena is God is still fine tuning the universe. It's not quite fine tuned enough yet. And he's well, going to do that. Okay. <laughs> separated the light from the dark and did three lots of laundry. Somebody needs to 
mention this to these right-wing Christian nuts who won't get vaccinated. God is fine-tuning the universe by killing off the stupid. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They call them the unvaccinated. They're being they're being raptured right now. <laughs> <laughs> Going right on up into that cloud. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, we'll be driverless. One one final question in that it well, second question maybe. What is the cure for superstition? I mean, we we, we go through our our history and, and we can trace the fact that we're becoming more scientific in our explanation of the universe so why can't we figure out what sort of mechanisms it might take to educate humankind or to humanize us away from these traditional uh, absurdities Here it comes in many different ways you could uh, get rid of the history channel that's one get rid of fox news that's two uh, actually uh, take education away from the parents and put it into uh, science teachers. Mm -hmm. And the list could go on and on and on. Teach critical thinking. Acts religion. You know, no. but there's part of me that says, you know, when I hear kids or whatever are, are 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 not thinking critically that the where are the parents in that mo a lot of my education did not come in the classroom it came at the you know the dinner table yeah. and mm -hmm. i i don't know if that's just not happening anymore or I well, it is happening but that the stuff they're teaching them is that stuff yeah well, that never happened in my household. If it wasn't in the Bible, we didn't discuss it. Wow. You didn't get a rabbit's foot? I had a rabbit's foot. Yes. You know, for luck. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the four-leaf clovers. <laughs> I think what, what, what people find, and, and but it's, it's not, they don't believe in it at some point. But it's just a, a momentary comfort that you can say, oh, I'm going to hope that I get this, you know, with the, with the rabbit's foot. But, you know, I think you grow out of it. I think what it is is people eventually realize you find other things that you, you know, to sort of well, just release that stress for the moment. That's what, you know, it, it was pretty I well, my cat. It was pretty well held that all knowledge was contained in the Bible. There was a huge debate in Christianity about how many teeth uh, a horse had until somebody finally said, you know, they studied the Bible and came up with all these various answers. And finally, somebody said, well, why don't we just walk outside and count them? Uh, and, 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 and that was one of the beginnings of the empirical method was the debate over <laughs> how many, how many uh, teeth was in the mouth of a horse. And that's true. There's an emerging field, though, called the uh, mental immunity. Um, can it, I think the guy spoke here, actually, didn't he, like about six months ago? You know they have a uh, you know this. I I hate yes. I just hate when they what was that? Yes, he spoke with us. I can't yeah. remember his name. Yeah, actually, there's a few different people that are coming out with that now. But, I mean, I hate when they use that term critical thinking because it's just I think it's become a term that everybody uses and that yes. just so many people yes. don't yes. understand oh, what it is. Yeah, exactly. It was Andrew. It sounds cont contrary. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does sound contrary. Critical thinking because I just oppose that. Right. That's critical thinking to them. It, mm -hmm. it has no real meaning anymore. Um, we're I've, almost out of time for those who want to keep to a rigid time structure, which we don't have to do, but just letting you know. Uh, before everybody yep. runs away, though, um, we won't be meeting next week, but in two weeks we will have Hemant Maida as our guest. Oh, wow. Okay. Great. Oh. He's always very interesting. Yes. You know, he got twenty thousand dollars, I believe, for his soul. Yes. When he sold it on eBay. He gave it to charity, I think. I don't think he. Gave I believe it. he did. <laughs> and the deal was he had to go to church for thirty days uh, with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, Joe, you're a pretty interesting guy yourself, and I have one final question for you, and that is, why a third was Lilith 
married to Fraser Crane. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Who the hell is hey, Lola? Yes, yeah, her name was Lola. Wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> I don't. I don't know who Fraser Crane was. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're out of the loop. I, I I radio, he was a radio broadcast one. That, very yeah, very famous know. psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah. oh. Popular popular yeah. sitcom called Fraser. Yeah. Oh, Fraser! Oh, Spun off of Cheers. Mm -hmm. I have never seen a single episode of Fraser, which is why I wouldn't know. Who oh Fraser. man, you did a whole lot. That's a good fun. show. <laughs> Excellent. He was on Cheers too, so if you watch that, yeah, I, I try to stick to the real McCoys and uh, uh, Beverly Hillbillies. Wow, <laughs> all right, highbrow, uh -huh. yeah. my, my, and, and my favorite is the Andy Griffith show. Yeah. <laughs> Even Speaking right, of man. which, I like Max, Opie, Opie's so cute. <laughs> Max Bear is still alive, the guy who played Jethro on the um, yeah, he's a gambler, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he's a big gambler. Have you ever met him, Joe? No, I haven't. No, his no. father I, I was played a... poker with Larry Flint. Jeff, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we all remember him. Didn't Max no. Bear have something else famous about him? His, his father. father was a boxer, famous oh. boxer. Oh, the Bear. Max Bear. Okay, yeah, 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 Max Bear Senior. Now, one one more item of business, Eileen. You can't go away without explaining those two objects in the background next oh. to the window. Stained glass. This is I. Well, I'm not too sure. Are we talking about the the mask? That's my <laughs> alien no, mask. Those those two objects. This yes. is for indigenous. Oh, I, ah. I don't know if you can see them. Indigenous Day. It's uh, it's you know, two gods and gay gods. You know, they're two men. And they're holding hands, and that's the little Indian girl there. Yeah, uh -huh. I just keep throwing all this, you know, stuff in an area. This is, you know, Indian stuff. You know, and again, a woman and... getting between two men. Uh, yeah. A woman getting between two men. Me. Yeah, kind of good for the, you know, they probably going uh, to do as a witch, too. You know, who knows? It does look like a shrine of some sort. Yeah, it's just, hey, I'm, I'm trying to find, I'm, I'm trying to organize, you know, it's, it's sort of, I told, I bought that down in Mexico when I was on a trip, you know, the two things. And I, cause I, my, for a gay friend of my daughter's and he didn't want it. So I'm playing. <laughs> it. it looks like something you'd see on a trip. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I used to collect all this crap. I what wish I was. <laughs> what kind of trip? Uh, yeah. A trip. Yeah. A little LSD involved, maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. I was lucky. Uh, uh, like I said, my sister worked at Pan Am, so I could get flight benefits with her. So we flew a lot, you know. Oh, so yeah. I went a lot to all these different, uh, you know, and seen their religious things. But and then the one now is James Young down there in Costa Rica. He must be seeing something different as far as you know the religious thing. But I I went to a we were someplace and I thought it was a like a, a wedding or something. Everybody was you know in the bells and it turned out to be a funeral. Because yeah, <laughs> he, yeah, I think I, think, I think I don't know if that was anyway. It was someplace over there. Yeah, I forget. So I made a similar worry. misconception when they made a trip to our New Orleans, I think, and it's like, oh, what's this party going on here? It's like this is a funeral. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's a little bit different because I remember the movies. They they'd start out real slow, and then what was on the band would break in, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, I I just went to one that was like that, and it was like sort of. You know, it was, it, it, it's a celebration of life. It's not like the, right. the Catholics with the, uh, you know, funeral. That's anyway. what they'll tell you every time you ask, you know, yeah. you're celebrating the life. You know, I like, I like it. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. That's what that clap is. <laughs> yeah. Very much like that, that, that outlook. Well, I guess we're about ready to go. Yeah. I got to mm. head out. And remember, I've enjoyed your uh, next time. I've enjoyed your topic, Joe. It was very nice. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, yes, yeah. because you know well, you can watch documentaries on all this stuff that goes like sort of through the whole history of it, and but this is more just discussing.
Well, we barely scratched the uh, surface on what are, in my estimation, two very, very interesting uh, books. Uh, and anybody who's interested in, in uh, religion uh, as an atheist or a believer ought to read them. They're, they're very, yeah. very It's a good laugh. Good laugh. Yeah. What are they again? <laughs> what are the titles again, Joe? The titles again are a history of the warfare of science with theology in Christendom. And the other is extraordinary popular delusions and the madness of crowds. <laughs> Which is just a funny title. Yeah. <laughs> I'm brother in the chat if you want to go copy them out, along with the link to the Gutenberg site. Is that Donald Trump and uh, James Brown behind you, Joe? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, <it is. laughs> okay. I was wondering. And George Bush also. Yeah. Okay. Is that your voodoo? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, right. I yeah. stick in regularly. Uh -huh. use, use a needle instead of a phaser. Hmm. <laughs> I uh, took some friends of mine to uh, a place called Chewy's in New Tampa. Oh, hello. Yeah, a new one? What happened to the old one? Is that a ventriloquist doll? Or? <laughs> they asked me, Joe, so we can look at it. James, oh. Oh, gosh. Are the batteries any good? <laughs> but this, I feel uh, good. If you've been to the Mexican restaurant called Chewy's, they have an altar in every one of them, and there's several in Texas. But it's an altar to Elvis. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they all the nice. you know. Oh. <laughs> so he's he's hiding in in Mexico. Is that what it is? Yeah, right. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Is it true they buried Elvis in the Cadillac? Oh, where yeah, is he? That's what I heard. In Cadillac. <laughs> was that other guy? They did that for that uh, that one mobster guy. They did bury him in the Cadillac of the gold rims. The one mobster's uh, son. What was his name? Oh, <laughs> God, he forgot. Yeah. Him. He's probably better. <laughs> yeah, that's what people do these crazy things that you're like, but then they, you know, the next generation won't remember them. So, I don't... oh, Thank you. Well, totally too much money. You can buy a pretty nice Cadillac for where you pay for a casket. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Might as well use a car. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah, we, should, we should have a discussion about that sometimes because <laughs> that's one of the craziest things that people do they have cemeteries and they have yeah. funerals and they spend billions of dollars every year with no, for nonsense yeah right yeah i wanted to be cremated and have my ashes stuffed into a 90 millimeter shell and fired off the deck of the enterprise, <laughs> the enterprise. <laughs> it's not that be, much i want to be compressed into a precious gem of some sort of diamond or a ruby <laughs> Well, they well, do cool. have that now. They do, and it's less money than being cremated. Oh, I really? How big it would be? I will have big it because you know once they reduce the take the water out of us and reduce us to chemicals, it's not very big. But when when you compress it into something like a diamond or whatever it's going to be, uh, it's got to be very much smaller. <laughs> There's actually a, an underwater cemetery off of Miami. I was I was somewhere. I saw a video of it. Really? It, yeah, they made it. To, um, to improve the the coral, the reefs down there that have, yeah. mm -hmm. so they put you in a cement kind yeah. of cylinder and the coral grows on it. And it's now a very popular place for divers because it's actually bringing the coral back. Yeah, yeah that in Chicago too, except they put cement shoes on them and just Me push too. them off up here. <laughs> and that's I knew right? that was coming. <laughs> I think it was Herodotus who pointed out that, you know, everything is cultural. Some people burn their dead, some people bury them, and others, yeah, cultures actually eat them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Speaking of which, it's dinner time. Yeah, <laughs> I got to go too.
<laughs> That'll pick your appetite, huh? Have some liver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna run if I can get some nice fresh carry on. <laughs> and thanks, Joe. That was good. Okay. Well, thank you. you all uh, for coming. I, I enjoyed the conversation and uh, let's Me do too, it. Again. Me too. Yeah, I'll do it again. I'll see you in two weeks then. All right. Okay. It was well, fun. Then. See you guys in two weeks. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Happy trails, everyone. <laughs> right. Happy trails to you. Okay. <laughs>